Okay, there is a new blood sorcery mod for Borders Gate 3, so you know we have to give it a try. As always, we can go level 1 to 12 with a comment to and a list of items for you to use, so let's jump straight in with the Sorcerer. Now, when it comes to spells, we do have a bunch here, and we're going to take all of these available. So we're going to start with Bone Chill, because it is a necromancy-based spell. It also prevents targets from healing on their next turn, and any undead target will have disadvantage on their attack rolls. We're going to pair this with Blood Bolt. Shoot a bolt of your own blood at your target, dealing 1 to 12 necrotic damage, and causing the caster to take 2 necrotic damage, or no bleeding if the caster is bleeding. Now remember that. No damage if the caster is bleeding. You bleed yourself to potentially bleed the target. If the target bleed, it drops a puddle of blood on the ground. Also, drop a puddle of blood below the caster. And Blood Needle. Maims your target, prevent him from moving, dealing 1 to 10 necrotic damage and causing the caster to take 1 to 4 necrotic damage. So we're going to take all the blood spells and then for our spells we are going to take Shield as it protect us as a reaction. And you could take Mage Armor if you want to, or you have more spells down here. Blood Rebuke. React your next attack with a bloody attack that deals 2 to 20 necrotic damage, or 3 to 30 if the caster is bleeding. This is another reaction spell. Or Blood Bath. Call forth a rain of blood, bleed every creature in the vicinity, hurting them for 1 to 4 necrotic. So for this one we are going to take Blood Rebuke instead of Shield at the moment. And then for our subclass, of course, Blood Sorcery. This gives us Sacrificial Spell. Spells you cast and attacks you and make ignore resistances and immunity to necrotic damage. Instantly a huge buff. We also get a Grim Harvest, so once per turn if you kill a creature with a spell, you gain hit points equal to twice the spell slot you used, thrice if it's a Necromancy spell. We also get Hemomancy, a munch on attack rolls while bleeding, and as you can see this now gives us the cantrip of Bloodbath and all this fun stuff here. For your ability points we're going to take 8 strength, 14 dex, 16 Constitution, 10 Intelligence, 10 Wisdom, and 16 Charisma, as this is our spell casting proficiency. For your proficiencies, take whatever you feel like. At Sorcerer level 2, we unlock our Sorcery points, and this plays very standardly like a normal Sorcerer. And for your spells here, we are going to take Mage Armor. And for your Metamagic, we are of course going to take Distance Spell, which means our range is increased by 50%. And we're going to take Twin Spell, which means we can target more than one creature. Sorcerer level 3, we get a new sorcery point as well as more spells we can pick here, such as Blood Ray or Blood Spike. Now, Blood Ray, we shoot 3 rays of blood, each ray deals 2 to 60 necrotic and damages the caster by 1 to 4 damage, or no damage if the caster is bleeding. And Blood Spike, transform the blood beneath you into spikes that impale it, dealing 4 to 40 necrotic damage to the target and all creatures around it. What you have probably noticed is a lot of these spells will either do damage to you or you have to be bleeding to maximize the damage. So your health pool will diminish very, very quickly. And it's not the biggest health pool either, so please bear that in mind. Now for a spell here, we are going to take Hold Person, because I think Hold Person is phenomenal. And we're going to take our Meta Magic of Quicken spell, which means we can cast a action spell as a bonus action instead. And that brings us very nicely to Sorcerer level 4. This gives us our first feat after we take a spell here. For this one, we are going to take Minor Illusion, just because it helps cluster enemies together for AoE attacks. And for a spell, we're going to take one of my favourites in the game, Mirror Image. Create three illusionary duplicates of yourself, each that distract attackers. Each duplicate increases your armour class by three. Just a nice way of buffing up your AC to protect you, because again, our health pool is not the strongest. And for your feet, we are going to take the air side and we're going to bump our charisma up to 18. Okay, Sorcerer level 5 gives us more actions we can do. First one is Sanguine Feast. Drain the vitality of all nearby creatures. The caster heals for half of the total damage dealt, drawing vitality from their foes to restore their own. Nice little way of buffing your health up because it will diminish. And Crimson Blast. Shoot a ball of your own blood from your fingers that explodes upon contact, rotting the flesh of everything in the vicinity and causing the caster to take 1 to 8 necrotic damage for each target hit. So bear in mind, if you do this AoE and you hit, four, five, six, seven, eight people, you are going to do a load of damage, but you're going to take a load of damage too. You could nuke yourself very easily. Now for a spell, we are looking into here, and there are a few options. You could take something like Enlarge or Reduce, Enhance Ability, Stinking Cloud. We're actually going to take Cloud of Daggers just to help create little choke points on the battlefield. And that brings us to Sorcerer level six, Blood Magic. When you cast a spell that deals necrotic damage, you add your Charisma modifier to the damage. 
and Blood Vitality. In combat, if the row is standing on the blood surface at the start of their turn, they heal 2d4 hit points, which is where you always want to be in blood when you are in combat. Always. Now for a spell, again, at this point you can kind of take anything, we're mainly building this around having the lead stuff. If you wanted to, you could take Fireball, but I don't really see the point. I would probably take Misty Step, just to have the utility, but again, we're going to have that option. Maybe even Magic Missile, because Magic Missile is great from the start of the game to the end of it. Sorcerer level 7 gives us Bloodstorm. Impale a storm of blood and flesh to rain from the sky, cover the ground in blood and strike all objects and creatures within range, and causing the caster to take 1 to 12 damage to each target hit, or 1 to 4 necrotic damage if we're bleeding. So again, always want to be standing in blood, always want to be bleeding. For a spell, I would probably take something like Haste, it can come in handy to put on your allies sometimes if you want to. And that brings us to Sorcerer level 8 with a feat available now. Now for a spell here, again, you can kind of take anything because we're really just relying on the blood options. I would probably recommend taking a lower level one, so maybe something like Thunder Wave, just to help you push enemies off of like ramparts and stuff like that. But for the ability score, we are bumping our Charisma all the way up to 18. Or sorry, all the way up to 20, I should say. And then Sorcerer level 9, Grasp of the Dead. Blood tentacles rise from the blood, attacking and restraining characters that stand in blood surfaces. Blood surfaces affected by the spell will disappear on cast. So you will drop any blood surfaces, but you will create tentacles that now just entrap people. For a spell, I would probably take something like Insect Plague. It just kind of thematically plays into this very, very well. And that brings us to Sorcerer level 10. 72 hit points now, more sorcery points, another cantrip. And for this one, let's take Ray of Frost. And I would recommend taking Cloud Kill again. Kind of thematically plays into this, and it's a really good spell to have. And for your meta magic, we are going to take Heightened Spell. So targets of spells that require saving throws have disadvantage on their first saving throw. Sorcerer level 11, Blood Homing. Advantage on attack rolls against bleeding creatures. We have Blood Power. You deal, you deal an additional 1 to 6 necrotic damage when you are bleeding. And Crimson Leech. Drain the blood of a target. If 52 to 112 necrotic damage reduces the target to 0 hit points, it disintegrates into crumbly ash. Deal 40 necrotic damage to the caster, or no damage if the caster is bleeding. That's how powerful this is, and how powerful having bleed on yourself is. Now for a spell here, you do have many options, Disintegrate, Circle of Death. I would probably try and save your spell slots for the spell we just spoke about, and I would come more down here and maybe take something like Ray, uh, Scorching Ray, something like that. And that brings us to our final level, Sorcerer level 12. And again, we are down here with our spell slots, so I would pick something like Rare Sickness, a nice little thematical spell to take. And for your feet, there are a few options. You could come into your ability score improvement and bump your constitution up to 18. You could take Alert to gain the plus 5 to initiative. You could take Dual Wielder, so we can dual wield two weapons like staffs, and that is exactly what we are going to do. Okay, when it comes to items, this is what I would use. The Circle of Bones. So, allied undead within 6 meters are resistant to bludgeoning, slashing and piercing damage, and this gives us animate dead, a nice way of buffing this class up even more. The Cloak of the Weave, gain a plus 1 bo bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls. Boots of Genial Striding, so unimpeded by difficult terrain. The Robe of the Weave, plus 1 bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls, and whenever we succeed a saving throw, we regain 1 to 6 hit points and a plus 2 to armor class, because we're willing to buff ourselves up of how squishy our hit points are. Brace of Defense, plus two bonus as long as you're not wearing armor or holding a shield. Shifting Corpus Ring, so we get invisibility and blur. Snowburst Ring, because if we do um, Ray of Frost, at least we can create targets of ice around the enemy. Now, you could use the Spell Crux Amulet if you want to, to regain a spell slot. However, because we are using Mokashir, which gives us Arcane Battery, and the Spark of Spell Power, which gives us Arcane Battery, as well as a bunch of other benefits. I would personally not use this, and instead, I would use this. The Amulet of Greater Health. This will set your constitution to 23, so if you wanted to come back in and respec, bump your con down and buff your other stats up, you could. Put into your dex, for example, to boost your AC. Um, you have advantage on constitution saving throws. Nice way of just increasing our health pool, so we take as little damage, or we risk ourselves dying as little as possible. So with all that being said, we are going to go find some combat and show this class off. Okay, at this point, as soon as you leave camp or whatever, make sure you hit your mage armor. So, cast it at level 1. We had 17 AC, 
if we come back into our character sheet, you can now see we have 20 AC. Mage Armor is a lifesaver for any Sorcerer build. Okay, as you can see, we're now in combat. So, first thing we have to make sure we do is Blood Sacrifice. It is a bonus action, but you bleed yourself to potentially bleed the target. Target bleeds, it drops a puddle of blood on the ground. We need to do this because this will ensure we take as little damage or maximize our damage on our attacks. So let's bleed Skeeth. There you go, so he is bleeding and we are bleeding. And now thanks to that, we can come in here with things like Blood Bolt. Shoot Blood Bolt, dealing 3 to 36 and causing us to take no damage thanks to that bleed. So let's get a Blood Bolt going. 28 damage and he has 4 turns of bleed. And as you can see, we took a little bit of damage, but not the worst. And because we are now standing in a puddle of blood, we should regenerate thanks to our class abilities. As you can see, you see the damage they took there. Now, unfortunately, we did take some damage, but we can do a blood rebuke. So let's do it at the lowest level possible. And we'll do sentinel as well. And as you see, we did 15 damage then, and another miss thanks to our AC. Okay, and it is back to our turn. Now, you always want to make sure you are bleeding. So, most of your bonus actions are sadly going to be on Blood Sacrifice. So let's do it on Skeev again. And there you go. You'll see we now have four turns of bleeding. And this opens us up to be able to do more spells like this. So we can do things like Blood Needle. We could also Meta Magic it if we really wanted to. We could do things like Crimson Blast. So we're going to Feast. So what we are going to do is we're going to do Blood Ray. Or are we? No. We're going to do... Grasp of the Dead to show this off. We're going to do it at 5th level. And as you can see, they are all standing in a puddle of blood. So... And there you go. They are all restrained. And in fact, we actually killed two of them thanks to that. And if we really wanted to, on our next turn, we could again use our meta magics. Okay, we're going to show off a few more skills. So, let's get out of dodge here. Have we got Misty Step? Do we take it? I can't remember. There is no Misty Step bit. That's okay. Now we are going to get hit, but I'm not going to worry too much. Because it means we can do Blood Rebuke if we want to. Let's do a high level Blood Rebuke to show you how much damage you can do with your reactions. There you go. 26 on a Barbarian. Not too bad. So let's come up here. And we will get ready. And what we're going to do is we are going to do a... Lovely attack where I'm not going to ensure we are bleeding. What we are going to do instead is we'll do Blood Bath. Now, if you upscale it, it doesn't do any more damage, doesn't last for any longer. But we are going to make sure we are raining blood everywhere. Just like that. And if we wanted to turn the next turn, we could restrain these enemies again, do a huge amount of damage. But regardless, they have the bleed. As you see, they took two damage from that bleed. And they might have missed their attack. And when they are going to hit, we have our reaction available to shield up and to protect ourselves. And there you go, two more bleed damage from that enemy there. Now again, if we were to come into here, we could look at some of our other spells. So let's do a twin spell. We can now target two people. And let's do a blood needle. So, can we hit both enemies? We actually can't hit both enemies. What about if I were to come here? Can I see them? Uh, blood Needle. No, sadly, I can't hit both. What about if I move a little bit? Let's come back down here. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, Blood Needle. Maim your target, prevent them from moving, and it deals a bunch of damage. So, one on you. And one on you. And that's all thanks to our sorcery points. 17 damage and maimed. And I believe we might have just killed the Barbarian. We did indeed kill the Barbarian. And it means we can set up our next round by coming back up here. You'll see we have a lot of sorcery points available to us. And as you can see, we did 9 damage thanks to the reaction. Okay, as you saw, we just healed up 7 hit points thanks to being in the blood. And... We are going to do some damage to ourselves now. So, this is what I was talking about. If we were to do a Crimson Blast at the highest level, we'll fire it on this one here. We are sadly going to damage ourselves. Now, don't forget what I said. 
you see we just did a shit ton of damage to ourselves. And that damage would have increased even more so if there was more targets within that fireball-esque attack. So please bear that in mind. You can easily kill yourself with this build. So very easily. But we can also get the blood sacrifice. And there you go, we'll get the bleed that we're standing in and this will again heal us up on our next round. You see, every enemy is just taking necrotic and bleed damage. As you see, we got the 9 damage there, and now we do take extra necrotic damage because, obviously, we're throwing around this stuff like crazy. But, if you need to heal up very quickly, we can do Sigwine Feast. We'll do that at 4th level. And there you go, 25 damage to him, and we healed for 12. And again, if we really wanted to, we could come back in here, we could do another Quicken spell, and then we have options to do more stuff like this. So if we really wanted to, we could do another one. And there you go, now we only did it at level low and we only healed 3, but that is like 18 points of healing over the course. And they might die on their next round. And there you go, another 7 healing, and now we can just use very basic things if we want to, to finish the fight. Now don't forget we do have cantrips as well, we've got a plethora of options when it comes to this build. So, what shall we do? Let's do a blood bolt on the first enemy here. 25 damage, the blood sorcerer is insanely powerful. It cannot be understated just how powerful uh, this subclass is. Okay, and that is the blood sorcerer build, levels 1 to 12 with the combat tutorial and items as always. Let me know what you think of this subclass, I think it's amazing. Probably one of my favourite mods in the game now. It does require a bit of tactical thinking, because you've got to make sure you have bleed, or that you're not going to just nuke your own hit points. But overall, an amazing class that deals a bunch of damage, helps and trap people, all sorts of fun stuff. So if you have enjoyed, please let me know in the comments below, and let me know what you would do about this guide, what would you change, what you do differently, what other items you'd use, all that fun stuff. If you're new and you haven't subscribed, if you'd like to, that would also be amazing, and hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys.